I think it'll save me about two hours of time. This happens every video. But for the purpose of like time yeah, and I really don't have time. Today, let's explore what went wrong with my Corpse Bride costume and give myself the time to fix those things. So the first thing that we need to fix up are the bones. The bones on the ribs have a rather large crack in them and there's a little bit of hot glue that you can still see. On the arm specifically, all of the fingers have fallen off due to movement and whatnot. And the major bones, like the arm bone, broke like in half and has also fallen off and is its own like it's, its own piece here these have fallen off let's kind of go back in time and 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 figure out what went wrong roll the clip okay so since my foam clay hasn't arrived yet and i really don't have time to just like wait to do this till the end because there's a lot of things that have to happen in order me for me to finish this bodice the ribs are one of them so i picked up some model magic Ah, okay, so that's it, that's it right there. Model Magic. Now, Model Magic is a really great so resource for things that are gonna be stagnant and that don't need to move very much. Now, after a little bit of discussion, luckily all of this happened while I was at a photo shoot with my friends Jedi Manda and Malicious K Cosplay and Ailey Studios. Luckily, the four of us were able to, like as things were breaking and as we noticed like what are the problem areas, we were able to brainstorm like on the spot ways to to fix this and Amanda had a really good idea to actually make these out of foam. We are gonna remake the ribs, we're gonna remake these really big bone pieces for the arm out of foam by using my Dremel and cutting it down and smoothing out the edges and all that jazz and then painting and priming and, and you know all of that. We're gonna do that for the bigger pieces but for these little tiny hand pieces like the fingertips I actually am going to use puffy paint. That is the plan for the the all of the bones. Also, when I was making this costume, I didn't allow myself enough time to actually make the two leg bones. We're not going anatomically correct for this. We're just really trying to focus on something that looks good enough that I can wear it to convention and people know I'm the corpse bride. I am going to also make a leg, which means I need to dye some more tights. We'll get to that a little bit later, but right now let's go grab our foam and Dremel and get to making some new bones. So my studio isn't the most ventilated space. Obviously I have goggles to protect my eyes from any flying pieces of foam and a respirator to make sure that I don't inhale any toxins or also foam dust. To start, I am going to trace around some of the bone pieces that I've already made since they're already the right size. I don't really need to adjust them that much. I just need to make new ones. Then I'm going to measure my upper leg and my lower leg and leave a little bit of wiggle room in that middle so that I can make some new pieces. With my foam scissors, I'm going to cut through my four millimeter foam to cut out each of my pieces. Okay, anyway, sorry, um, I had to. It's November, if you're watching this, actually it's about to be December. Here are my bones, don't worry about my flex. I'm gonna clean all this here in a minute, but these are all my bones. Like if this was like a, a non-organic thing, like a, I don't know, armor, this would be the world's worst uh, drumming job. But these are organic and bones kind of have texture. So I was like, I'm not gonna stress too much about like these ridges and lines and things. I'm just gonna do the best I can. And let's be honest, no one's gonna be close enough for this to like for that to matter and if they are that's kind of awkward or they won't judge me because they're my friends so now I have to clean off everything I gotta dust off the camera I gotta clean off myself and uh, then we will start to um, we'll we'll seal and prime and paint woohoo
so it's almost lunchtime so I'm gonna be going downstairs and since I'm gonna be down there I'm going to take these pair of tights and I'm basically going to dye one leg of them like one half like 50% like right down the middle I've got black dye and my gloves I will just heat up a pot of water and then I have like a bucket that I use I've done dyeing on this channel before I'm just going to heat up some water I'm going to put that water in the bucket add some of this with my gloves on and I have an actual wooden string spoon that's just for dyeing. And then I'm going to take this and basically get one of the legs soaking wet and stick it in and uh, like clip it or hold it in some sort of way that it will hang and only get the one half of the leg. So that's the plan and uh, I hope it's successful. I'll let you know on the other side. All right, I'm gonna leave this in here to dry and then hopefully once it's dry, I can use it. Luckily I wear black or I'm gonna wear black shorts over it. So like all this discoloring up here isn't really gonna be seen. It's really just about these two legs at the bottom. One obviously being where I'm gonna put her skeleton legs, skeleton legs, her bones, and the other pretending to be the body paint. So here's my paint. All these. I need to find an ivory looking color. Probably white so that even if I find an ivory I can mix it. Some paint brushes. Oh primer. Primer. Duh. Varnish, primer, sealer, whatever I can find. So I'm gonna find those and uh, then we'll get to painting our bones. First, change my shirt. White is just living a little bit too on the edge for me while painting so got it covered. Now we're going to use varnish to prime this. I've used it a lot in the past for priming foam and it's great. I do like two coats, maybe three, call it a day. You can also use Plasti Dip or Mod Podge or like paint primer. I mean, there's so many things you can do. I'm gonna use this. I've got some white paint, this beige paint. I also have a little bit of this light cinnamon in case like this doesn't work out and I need to mix these. So yeah, we're gonna kind of try to get like a slight off white. I don't want it to be like super white, but I also don't want it to be super like beige, I guess. Like I'm probably gonna have to mix these two to get the color I want. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start here and when I get to the point where I can't really like paint, I will check in with you and uh, we'll talk about what I can do while I'm waiting for stuff to dry because nobody wants to watch paint dry. I don't, I don't have time to watch it dry. All right, so we've got some bones happening. I did two coats of the paint and then I did two coats of varnish on top. So I'm ready to go. Basically what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna retrace this piece here and I'm gonna make it a little bit wider because I didn't like how much space I had. And then I'm gonna glue the ribs onto that and then I'll glue all of these onto felt as well. And then I'll trim those felt pieces very close to the bottom of the ribs. Here is what my leg looks like. It's not like the blackest black. I probably could have left it in longer, but I think it'll do. And then there's the glove without anything on it. Here is this without the ribs. How I think I'm gonna do this, cause it is like 4.30 and don't think I can get all the sewing done tonight by the time I have to make some, some soup and dinner and stuff. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to get the white part done first because then I don't have to switch thread and then I can move on to all the black pieces and I can do those like downstairs or wait for tomorrow. I have to see what I have on the list for tomorrow. If I can finish this with what I have to do tomorrow, then we'll finish it tomorrow. But for now, we're just gonna hot glue these pieces onto felt and I'll go from there.
Okie dokie, so I am all pinned, ready to sew my <laughs> leg bones onto these tights. Now these are tights, which means they can run pretty easily. I think what I'm gonna do is hand stitch them and then I'll either use like a like a clear nail polish or like maybe a um, the fray check or something like that to just kind of help with the uh, nylon. Oh wait, no, I could use hairspray. I might spray it all with hairspray afterwards and then I can leave it on my leg for a few minutes, let it kind of all do its thing, and then I will take it off and it will be done. The knee here, I cannot sew on the sides, otherwise it'll pull this up like that and possibly rip holes in it. So what I'm gonna try to do is do a tack on the top and a tack on the bottom. This is all new territory for me, friends, so we'll see how we this goes, but I do like think that it's gonna look pretty good, at least good enough, again, like we're saying, I'm saying, I'm not trying to be perfect or anything. We've got a leg, a little lady skeleton leg. And honestly, like with this lighting and the way that my skirt is kind of like hiding it, it doesn't look too like horrible. Um, just a fun little costuming trick. I always add like running shorts to my tights to help my tights from sliding down. I don't know if anyone else has this issue where like tights like to kind of like wiggle their way down and then the crotch goes from like the natural crotch to like here and then you're really uncomfortable all day. I wear my little running shorts. It doesn't really make going to the bathroom any more difficult than it already would be if you're wearing tights. So just a little thing that I do. Now here is my skeleton leg, my blue leg, my skeleton leg, my blue leg. Okay. So the next thing that, or adjustment that I want to make is the blue glove that I was using for like the skin color. Basically I had makeup that was a certain shade and I thought I had purchased the right color matching gloves, which was that like it was a much brighter blue. They weren't they didn't match like it just was really bad. I also didn't like the consistency or like the thickness of that glove like it looked and felt like I was wearing a glove not like like a like it didn't look and feel like Sally. Uh, if you remember my Sally Skellington ball gown I made these really cool tight gloves like I bought a pair of tights and then I turned them into gloves so that they would help me not have to paint my entire skin. I also added little nails to them so so that I could make them look a little bit more realistic. And I really liked the way that looked. So when I saw myself in the mirror with this two shades of blue and how it didn't look, I was really disappointed. Instead of buying another pair of the arm, like the sock glove things that like I bought, I decided to buy another pair of the blue tights. These tights are $18 and those gloves were $38. So it is a little bit like, yes, it's more work, but it's a little cheaper that we are going to make an arm sock. We're just gonna make one and the reason that I'm not using the Sally ones for this is because they have stitches on them. Like I know that's dumb, but at the same time, it's not. I think that it's important to try to do my best to stick to like the way that her skin would look. We've got these, we're gonna make an arm sock. I'll show you how I make them. Let's do this. Okay, so this is the second glove and I have now just ripped a hole here and I can't get the pinky on after comparing it to my Sally gloves. I think when I made Sally, I bought tights a size larger. That is how I was able to get an entire hand's worth of glove on because like, I'm not gonna lie, this is painful. This has been hurting the entire time. It's not gonna look great, but we're gonna use the Sally glove because why, why am I doing all of this extra work when I have a glove that works? You know, like it's not the cutest glove. I thought maybe I can put try to put makeup on this, but honestly, we're just gonna use the Sally glove and if anyone says anything, I'll be like, yeah, I'm being resourceful by reusing a glove from a different character. I don't know. I'm so annoyed that this, this is the second one. Let me see if I can find the first. Is this the first? No, I'm just really annoyed. Okay, so anyone thinking of making their own sock glove hand things from tights, make sure you buy a much larger size tight so you have more to work with. Okay, so now we get to start the embellishment phase of this whole, like, level up or like, you know, 
upgrades to my corpse bride costume. I'm really excited for this. When I originally started this and like wanted to make this, I had so many ideas for embellishments and I just didn't give myself the time to do them all. I did do tons of rhinestoning. We have lots of footage. Toby even helped me rhinestone, which I'm so thankful for. And obviously we like added all this beautiful trim to be like the, the swirlies going up her gown. There's even more embellishments that I want to do. So there's a few hand sewing embellishments and then more rhinestoning. I'm going to start by showing you what I started last night on the couch, which is some of the hand sewing embellishments. I'm hoping that I can get this specific first embellishment done to tonight, maybe even the second one. It's like 3.30, we have D&D tonight, so I don't know how far I'm gonna get, but I'll just show you and then I will take this over to my chair in front of my laptop and get going. Okay, so this is my trim that we added all these beautiful beautiful rhinestones too. And actually in the video, I believe either I took footage of it and just didn't share you because I didn't get to it or whatever. I don't remember, but I did talk about adding these like these beads, these like little teardrop jet black, like super sparkly beads. Um, I have just enough to put in the center of each of these. So I'm gonna be doing that. That's basically the first embellishment that I will be adding to this. And then, like I said, I wanna do the hand sewing embellishments first, and then I can do the, cause rhinestoning is with glue. Then I can do the rhinestoning later. Okay friends, so we get to rhinestone today. I am so excited for this. I finished all of the jet beads last night. So let's talk about rhinestoning. First, there are two things that I wanted to rhinestone that I didn't even touch with rhinestones and that are that is like the gloves and the veil. I'm going to do both of those kind of at or around the same time and then I'm going to move back onto the skirt. There is a large section that is blue on the skirt that I really wanted to add some AB crystals to to just kind of like I don't know make that part sparkle a little bit more. We will get to that in a little bit but first I'm going to take you a spin around my table because I have two sections set up for rhinestoning because I will be doing a combination of hot fix rhinestoning and rhinestoning with glue. So let's talk about that. Okay, so this is my hot fix setup. I haven't flipped this switch on yet so we can touch it and whatnot and not worry about anything. This is the hot fix crystal embellisher that I'm using. Let's talk about why I'm using hot fix and where I'm using it. On these gloves, look how dainty and pretty they are. I want to add some blue rhinestones up here and then some just regular AB crystals around the white. This mimics the design that I did on the bodice. I have these tiny stones. These are three millimeter, I believe. They could be smaller. Um, I can't remember what SS that is, but basically these stones in this, this whole packaging of stones, these are a little bit smaller. You can totally use glue with them, but I've just personally found with smaller stones, it's easier for me to pick up and move them with the hotfix tool. That's just my preference. Now let's talk about glue. So over here, I have my much larger stones. They're only a size, like these ones are only a size larger than those ones over there. Although these are much, much smaller and these are smaller. So the ones that I'm gonna be using are this one here and then these ones here. And these are larger. And I found that for me personally, it's easier to apply larger ones faster with glue. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily easier. It's just much faster. So I have my glue. This is Gemtac. I swear by this. Um, I don't use E6000. You will not see me use E6000 for gems. It's toxic, which means I have to wear a respirator and I don't want to wear a respirator for eight hours. That's just that. Okay. I'm also, I have these black ones out. I'll show you. These were used on the hem. I'm considering applying a few to this base here and then the blue ones here and I'm not gonna add any more on the veil because it is a chiffon 
and it means that I'll get glue onto the back. And honestly, I don't necessarily feel like I wanna add some to the chiffon. When we move down to the skirt, which is just hanging out there, we'll talk about rhinestones and like placement on that when we get there. I'll show you a little bit of each of these processes and then I'll just check in when I'm done with these two pieces to show them to you. Okay, so I wasn't 100% sure what I was going to do for this part. Um, so I, I played and I've got something figured out. In this, like along this trim here, I'm doing these blue stones. Um, I did them, well, I did them on here. Um, so I'm adding blue stones there and then I'm doing just your regular AB stones on this but it's it it was random and then I kind of got into a groove of like uh, a little bit above like this one and a little bit above this one uh, you know kind of but I, I still want it to look a little sporadic but also like having kind of like cadence helps me and then the last thing is I'm gonna be sporadically adding just some black ones around all the burnt so that's what I'm gonna do and I think it's gonna add just enough like because when I step back like do oh my god look how much that glitters that's awesome that's literally what I wanted to do so there we go the final embellishment I decided to do was to add these pearls to this blue swirly trim just like I did on the corset The last thing that I really wanted to do was to add some of this satin ribbon around the base of my bouquet. I honestly have never held a wedding bouquet before and don't really pay much attention to them. So I just used this satin ribbon and hot glued it around the base, put a little bow on it, called it a day. I love it. I'm so happy I gave myself some time to fix up this costume and make it something that I'm really gonna love wearing. When you're seeing this video, I will be on the road to Tampa Bay getting ready to set up my booth and be a guest at Holiday Cosplay Tampa Bay. However, I don't really have a reveal section for this because there's not much to reveal. Like footage wise, it doesn't really look that different than what it did before. But if you are interested in a side by side. I think I'll post one on my Instagram in the next week or so. So make sure you check out my Instagram, Casey Renee Cosplay. Otherwise, I don't have much more to show for this week or say for this week. So I guess then I will see you in the next video, which we will be doing a studio organizing video. Basically, there is a lot of stuff in my studio that is hidden in drawers that kind of exploded over the year. And I would absolutely love to just go through and organize some things talk about my costumes for 2023 and just have a nice little like end of year wrap up if you like that kind of videos but you want to kind of get an understanding of how I got to this place in my studio, then maybe check out this video from last year where I do a complete studio, deep dive, get through some fabric, all that jazz. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video and may all your dreams come true.